LTSPICE 4 supplies many device models to include discrete like transistors and MOSFET models. Nevertheless, there are many third-party models for manufacturers that are available that you could add to your circuit simulation. The two basic types of third-party SPICE models are those described with a dot model statement and those described with a dot sub-circuit statement. Models given as a dot model statement are for intrinsic SPICE devices like diodes and transistors, whereas models given by dot sub-circuit statement define a component by a collection of intrinsic SPICE devices. For example, an op amp would be modeled with a dot sub-circuit statement. Welcome to LT SPICE 4 Adding Third-Party Models. I'm your host, Gabino Alonso. This video provides an overview of how to add a third-party model to LT SPICE 4. I will demonstrate how to add a dot model statement for intrinsic SPICE device. And furthermore, show you how to add and create a symbol for a dot sub-circuit statement. For our circuit simulation, let's assume we are interested in adding a third-party general purpose diode model. If you go to this third-party website, we'll notice that they have a library file available to download, and that this library file contains a dot model statement. This dot model statement provides the parameters for a specific SPICE component, and since the behavior of the device is already known by SPICE, the parameters will define the component's electrical characteristics. If we look at this dot model statement, we see that the first argument here is the name of the model, D1N4007. And we'll reference that later on from within the context of our circuit simulation in LT SPICE 4. It's important to note when using any model that the name be unique. In other words, two different types of circuit elements cannot have the same model name. The next argument, letter D, represents the intrinsic SPICE model being defined, in this case of type diode. This is then followed on by a list of parameters that are specific for that SPICE diode model. And for more information on these parameters, you can reference the LT SPICE 4 uh, documentation. It's also important to note that when using any third-party model, that you need to verify the performance of that third-party model using your own test fixture prior to incorporating them into your simulations. Once you have reviewed the third-party dot model statement, you can now evaluate and incorporate that model into LT SPICE. To use the model in your schematic, you need to add an instance of the symbol which best represents the dot model type. Recall in our case that was a diode, and I've already added that to a test jig file. The next step is to edit the compo component attributes. To edit, normally we would just right-click on the component symbol and select a diode model from the existing library in LT SPICE. However, in this case, we want to incorporate a third-party model. And to do so, we're going to need to hold down the control key and then right-click on the component symbol to edit the component attributes. The first and most important attribute is called the prefix. This determines the basic type of the symbol. If the symbol is intended to represent a intrinsic SPICE device, the symbol should match the appropriate prefix for that device. In other words, R for resistor, C for capacitor, M for MOSFET. In our case, we're using a diode, so we need to have the value of D for the prefix. Next, we need to edit the value for the symbol to coincide with the name of, in the dot model statement. And if you recall, that was D1N4007. Once we've added that, we can then click OK. And now we have a symbol to represent that third-party model in our schematic. The final step is to add the third-party dot model statement to your simulation by adding a SPICE directive. There are several methods to do so. One of them is using a dot lib statement with the URL to the third-party library file. We can then paste this on our, on our schematic, execute the simulation. And what this will do when LT SPICE executes, it will copy over that third-party library file onto the local directory of the file being simulated. Alternately, we could have also done this with a dot .include statement. The difference with, between the dot .include statement versus the dot .lib statement, the dot .lib statement will only copy over the dot .model statements that are appropriate for our simulation. The dot .include will copy over the complete library to our local directory. Once we have a local copy of the library file 
in our development environment, we can then edit this .include or .lib statement so that we no longer download that library file every time we execute the simulation. If we execute this again, this will now use the local copy of that library file in the simulation. You can also manually download the third-party library file to your local directory and reference it using a .include .lib statement. Please note when referencing that library file that you must use an absolute path name, complete file name, and file extensions. Otherwise, you will get an error message that the file cannot be found. It really doesn't matter what the file extensions are, whether it be a .lib or .text. In our case, since the library file is in the calling netlist directory, we don't need to add a file path name. Regrettably, Windows Explorer default is not to show file extensions. So please look under Tools, Folder Options, click on the View tab, and uncheck Hide Extensions for Known File Types. Even though the .include or .lib statements allow you to reference an external third-party library file, the most portable option is to actually cut and paste the .model statement into your schematic VI SPICE directive. This makes your simulation file very portable and removes dependencies on the library file. If you do not want to paste the dot .model statement into your schematic, remember to always include the library file with your schematic whenever you share with another user. Otherwise, they will not be able to run your simulation. As mentioned in the introduction, models given by dot .subcircuit statement define the component by a collection of circuitry of intrinsic SPICE devices. Similar to dot .model, the dot .subcircuit statement allows circuitry to be defined and stored in a library for later retrieval by name. Here's an example third-party dot .subcircuit statement for an op amp. You notice that it contains a unique name, associated pins, followed by the definitions of the subcircuit statement to include dot .model statements. The end of the dot subcircuit statement must contain a dot end directive. When adding a dot subcircuit model to an LT SPI simulation, you need to add a symbol to call the subcircuit, and the model must agree on the same pin port net list order. Please do not always assume that all third party models follow the popular pin order conventions, so please always double check that. To add a su dot subcircuit model that we looked at earlier to our simulation, we need to start off by adding a symbol that best represents the model in our simulation. In this case, that would be a generic op amp. I'm going to do a mirror and a rotate here to position it correctly. Next, we can right click on the symbol to edit the attributes. To use the subcircuit to find in the library, the symbol prefix should be changed to X, which is already done in this case because it's generic. The prefix X is used when you want the symbol to represent a subcircuit to find in a library that is not based on intrinsic SPICE device like it was earlier in the dot .model statements. We can now edit the value to the represent the name used in the dot .subcircuit statement, which in this case was ACME1. Now we have a symbol to represent that dot .subcircuit that we're interested in modeling. Lastly, we need to either add the complete dot subcircuit statement to the schematic as a SPICE directive or use a dot .include or dot .lib statement and reference the library file to include file path and extensions. If your third party dot subcircuit statement is a collection of circuitry not represented by an intrinsic SPICE device, or if it doesn't follow the popular pin order conventions, LT SPICE provides a very simple method to create a new symbol and program it to automatically include the necessary model for the simulation. To do so, place your cursor on the line that contains the dot subcircuit statement, right click on that line, scroll down to where it says create symbol, and LT SPICE now will recreate a symbol that represents that dot subcircuit statement. If needed, you can further edit this symbol to best represent that dot subcircuit statement. 
This symbol and the associated dot subcircuit statement will be available under the component library under auto generated. When you use the symbol auto generated by LT Spice, there's no need to add a dot include or dot lib statement to your schematic. You can just execute it as is. To download LT Spice 4 or for more information on adding third party models, please visit us at www.linear.com forward slash LT Spice. Happy simulations.